Fire in the Sky by Bruno Williams. A discussion from someone else, broken into three parts, defining the secrets of the sun, and touching upon fourth dimensionality somewhat. Part 1. These were the important parts. We can see 24 images per second. Over that count it is then called subliminal images. Maybe I have written this before. 24 images per second equals 2,073,600, or 24 times 60 times 60 times 24. The resolution of a full HD screen is 1920 by 1080, which equals, again, 2,073,600. Next, the sun travels 0.25 degrees per minute. 0.25 degrees times 60 times 24 equals 360 degrees, or one day, a full rotation. Now, UHD screen is 3840 times 2160, which equals 8,294,400. Guess what? 8,294,400 times 0.25 degrees equals, you guessed it, 2,073,600. Question. Why are screen resolutions calibrated on how many images we can see in one day, and also with the speed at which the sun travels every day? One even more amazing observation, then I'll answer the other member and continue with the sun discussion. 2,073,600 divided by 360 degrees equals 5,760. In the Jewish calendar, year 5760 is year 2000 in the Gregorian calendar. It's also, as a side note, year 6000 in the Anulusis calendar of masonry. I detail the secrets of this in another video, so stay tuned for that. Continuing on. And what happened in the year after 2000 or the 360 degrees or a full cycle? 9-11. Interjecting here for but a moment, we see that, beginning in 2000, that the heralding of the Age of Transition was being sounded. I will touch upon this in my new John D videos, but he was told by an angel, the angel Raphael, I use angel in quotations, that, quote, he would need to initiate a hermetic revolution, unquote, and it would have to spread to the entire world, come the passing of 420 years. This was in the year 1581 or so, this revelation, is that would be the beginning of the apocalypse or the lifting of the veil. This, I believe, means that we are to ascend, or descend in hermetic terminology, I will detail that in another video as well, to the higher dimension of man. We are in the fourth and the fifth, and we seek the sixth and seventh, the superman and overman status, according to the Kabbalion, the Hermetic Bible for all intents and purposes. Hence, is this entire agenda of Cullen merely a mechanism for filtration for those who are not like the barbarian masses, unquote, and would be receptive to this Hermetic ideal of higher dimensionality or higher reason and thought? Are they filtering for those with souls or spirit of gold and those with souls of lead? It does make one wonder. But it states that when this transition arrives, that we will not enjoy it, and for those who will survive, we will have to realise the wisdom that our mind, or source, spirit, is an emanation not of our bodily vessel, or, for some, our material possessions, no. It is far beyond such a state. The corpuscle of the spirit, or mind, is beyond, potentially, even the mind itself. Our consciousness cannot be in this modern era, measured or even quantified. Yes, we can understand how hormones in the brain affects our consciousness. We can even attribute patterns to the permutations of behaviours. We call this psychology. However, it would seem like the prism, that our mind is but a prism or an aperture for our spirit or source, of which it then takes the light of the spirit and fractures this monad or solitary light into its various compartmentalized permutations. Each compartmentalized permutation, known only a faint inkling as to the source it derived from, 
unless it is initiated, to know of the godhood that it possesses. I will delve into this further in another video, and another couple of books, of which I have begun writing the first of right now, and it will be an extrapolation of the Kabbalion cybernetics, and the religious ethos of this cult of power, or as they would see it, the quote, cult of the elect, unquote. Digressing back to our notes upon the sun, what a coincidence that the same number that has 2,073,599 chances not to be random also links with the Jewish calendar, of which then further links with the passing of an important epoch on our Gregorian calendar. But wait, the year 2000 is also the year 6000 in the Masonic Analusis calendar system. Just how everything is so encoded into the fabric of everything, from the microcosm to the macrocosm, is just fantastic, mind-blowing. Vision, screen resolutions, length of one day in seconds, the speed of the sun, calendars, and a full cycle of the sun, all are aligned in a serendipitous fashion, or by the intentions of a cosmic or hermetic architect. Now look at this. 2,073,600 equals year 5,760 in the Jewish calendar, which equals 6,000 Anolusis of the Masonic calendar. What if 6,000 years was the length of a full sun's cycle? How many years would be left? 6,000 minus 5,760 equals 240. And you are back with the number 24. 24 hours in a day. 24 images per second. Fascinating, isn't it? Not convinced. Because the number is 240 and not 24, see this then. 5,760 divided by 24 equals 240, while 6,000 divided by 240 equals 25. What does this mean? It means that we entered the 25th, or last hour, of the full cycle in 2000. The sun travels 0.25 degrees in one minute. 0.25 degrees times 60 minutes equals 240, or one hour. The sun burns nothing. The sun is taking energy from another dimension, a counter space, if you will. I already went into this, and there is indeed no possible understanding of the sun if the big picture is not taken into account. This is what the next part will be about. You cannot see the sun in space. He assimilates the source of light with the sun while he said before that he does not know where the sun takes its energy from, and that is where he misses the answer. Yes, the source of light is not visible. It is called the black sun for this reason. But the sun and stars are visible in space, or at least their projections. What is the sun, part two? I will summarise a few things I already wrote, but it matters a lot to explain the sun. There is nothing in nature which is not a group, from living creatures to plants. It is a multiplayer game, each player being one team. At the very beginning, infinite intelligence and energy. There are two forces of the universe, which are in a state of absolute stillness. Then the gong rings out and reverberates. The gong is the Big Bang. Infinite intelligence wants to experience its infinite energy, and vice versa. From this point, creation takes place in an almost infinitude of expression, and the game starts. Intelligence is the vibration. Energy is the frequency. By harmonising both, a group prints its signature in space-time. It works very similarly to a radio. It is pretty easy to imagine in theory, but incorporating it into one's being is not. So let's take the example of the bees. The queen is the soul of the group. The radio emitter that lives in a higher dimension than the bees, of which our individual antennas perform in the program of their group in the 3D physical dimension. The queen vibrates on the group a frequency signature, and like our radio emitter, under a certain range. An easy proof is that if you use a magnet on a queen bee, she loses the connection to all of the rest and dies. For the story, bees have a strong reptilian DNA type structure. It works exactly the same in the cosmic world. The sun would be the queen, its subjects on earth the bees. The sun is an oversoul group 
many could be sceptical, which I understand because this aspect of reality is not directly perceptible from the 3D density side of existence. Well, in fact, it is, but it takes some training, if you will. The sun is an oversoul group, in other words, a living entity. One must be very naive to believe that the one object to shower thanks upon, to whom all kinds of living forms can exist on Earth, would be just a nuclear or fission device. The fact that they desire people to believe that said nuclear or fission hypothesis should awake some suspicions in us, when at the same time the technical information given about this nuclear device is far from being realistic, still, I agree that the sun being a living entity will be the most difficult part to assimilate for many, but as you will see, the explanation of the sun's physical aspects will connect many dots. Part 3. What does all these domes represent? Can you see it? It is the monad or the toroidal via a different perspective. An oculus, plural oculi from Latin oculus eye, is a circular opening in the centre of a dome, or in a wall, originating in antiquity. It is a feature of Byzantine and neoclassical architecture. It is also known as Well du Bouf, from the French, or simply a bull's eye. Oculus means eye, like this one, the all-seeing eye. This monad, or source of all, is likened to an eye. Now, the eye does not emanate light, but it does process it and absorb it. It becomes illuminated through the knowledge of the world that is before it. They all see an eye, and you see it within this one distinctly, as its lens and pupil divided into sections, and this is reflected in the simsum, which is essentially the Kabbalistic monad, or the source of all, the common source for the entirety of the universe, that we see and do not see. Now let us look at the anatomy of the eye, and specifically, let us see some of the words for the lens of the eye within the Romance languages. This is indeed very interesting. As you see, the word for lens in French is cristalline, like the crystal ball or the scrying materials, and the lenses for that use. John Dee had several, they appear on the screen now. Are these crystals, these lenses, some sort of threshold or gateway, like our sun may be a point in which light passes through from something or somewhere else? The Pantheon itself is a dome with an oculus, of which, at certain points of the day, shines upon the statues of the twelve gods, or, as it is right now, twelve saints. This is showcasing the monad, that toroid or lens, if you will, that crystalline, the dome. It is above God. The God is merely the mechanical universe. It is not the emanation of thought, which is the common source of the entirety of the universe. The thought is the monad. Naturally, this all links with the toroid, as above, so below, and the fourth dimensional representation of that, which is the gloom. Again, the macrocosm is mirrored within the microcosm. That is the end of Bruno Williams' notes upon the sun.